What's going on, everybody? This is Decred in Depth. I'm your host, Angelo, and I'm here with none other than Jamie Holdstock, developer for Decred. What's going on? What's going on, Jamie? Hey, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about your background and intro into the crypto space. So I think I first heard about Bitcoin in 2010, maybe 11, just, um, you know, reading on forums, just never really paid much attention to it. Uh, I think I first bought a Bitcoin in 2013. There was like a big pump cycle in 2013. Uh, I bought it around $300, I think. Watched the price go up to sort of $1,200. Missed that. Ended up selling at about $600, so I doubled my money. I was pretty happy with myself. Um, I didn't really look at cryptocurrency again for a few years, really. Um, so that was my intro. Um, a few years later, I think it was probably 2015, around Christmas, uh, saw an article on Slashdot talking about some OG Bitcoin developers who had left Bitcoin and wanted to start their own thing. Um, sounded pretty interesting. I thought that could be another opportunity for me to double my money. So I, uh, I read into it a little bit more. Um, and that was when my Decred journey started. Hmm. So I take it those Bitcoin developers was conformal systems. Yeah, I mean, it turns out now I have a bit more of an understanding of it. They weren't Bitcoin core developers. They were BTC suite developers, which I didn't know at the time. They're very different things. They were working on Bitcoin, but they were working on their own implementation of the Bitcoin software. So they weren't part of Bitcoin core. They were building a second implementation, which was completely compatible with Bitcoin core. But I mean, the sentiment was the same. These guys were smart Bitcoin developers. They had a feeling that something wasn't quite right with Bitcoin, so they wanted to do their own thing. So let's get more into Decred then. Let's talk about it and what you found attractive about the project. So I've got to be honest, the first thing that really caught my eye was I could get Decred for free. They were performing an airdrop. They wanted to sort of kickstart their community by handing out a load of coins for free to people who people who were interested in the project, people who could contribute to the project. Um, they wanted to bootstrap the project and make sure that it was decentralized from day one. So I think in the end, they ended up giving coins for free to about 1,500, maybe 2,000 people. I was lucky enough to be one of those people. Um, and that really was the hook that sort of got me onto Decred and means it's sort of the reason I'm here now is that was the initial thing that got me hooked. Um, as I started looking further into the project, I joined up on the project forums. I started to learn a bit more about these people who um, had been working on BTC Suite and had started Decred. Um, I very quickly realized that these were some incredibly, incredibly smart people. At first, I actually didn't really want to interact with these people. I felt a bit like I was underqualified. So I sort of hang around on the forums, I read, I absorbed, I learnt. I saw how these guys were interacting with other newbies like myself who turned up and it almost seemed like no question was too dumb. There was always time to sit down and explain and make people feel welcome. I, I still feel that today. Yeah, it's... C C-Zero has a sense of humility when, when communicating with people. Sure, and that was what really got me to... It, it sort of made me feel comfortable enough to say hi. and. Um, I started interacting, I started talking, I spoke to a couple of people who just, I was amazed at how much time they made to help me feel welcome. So what was your intro into the Decred community and how did you first start contributing? I think my first ever contribution came as a result. I was having a conversation with one of the guys who unfortunately is not with the project anymore, but he had been driving a lot of the efforts around documentation. Um, at the time we had a, a documentation website and then there was also like a Decred Wikipedia. And we were talking about merging these two things and copying relevant articles from the Wikipedia and into the document site. So I actually started with that. Um, it seemed like an easy task. It felt like something that even as an outsider, I could contribute something useful. Um, so my first contribution was effectively copying and pasting from one site to another, but it was received gratefully. Um, the guys who were in charge of the project were grateful that I'd spent the time on that and they encouraged me to work on some other stuff. It wasn't long after that. I think I'd maybe written 
only a couple of hundred words of original content myself when Jake from the project approached me and he asked me if I wanted to get paid for my work. They liked what I was doing and they wanted me to stick around. And so they offered for me to sign a contract. So what are some of your current duties as a Decred developer? So, yeah, you used the word developer. I've moved since then. I've moved away from documentation and I've started doing a lot more development work. Um, I'm a developer by trade. I've spent uh, a good 10 years now, probably more like 15 years writing software. So I moved from documentation. I moved into development. Um, as a Decred developer, I think I've probably got three key responsibilities. One of them is the obvious, and that is writing code. Um, now, that could be fixing bugs that people have reported. That could be creating new features. That could be simple things like rebranding web pages or making things look better. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can contribute by writing code. Um, a second con uh, responsibility that I think some people might not realize is kind of an integral part of being a developer is reviewing other developers' work. So making sure that code contributed by other people, making sure that it meets our standards, making sure that it works correctly, possibly offering them um, some advice on how to improve their code. Um, and then the third aspect of being a Decred developer is contributing your ideas and discussing with other people, what are we going to build in the future? How are we going to build it? And helping to design and sort of steer the roadmap of where Decred technology is going to go in the future. So you mentioned to me prior that um, you're assisting with the proof of work mining pools. Let's cover some of the work that you're doing in there and, and, and setting them up. The, the pool has been designed from day one to really fit with the Decred ethos and principles. And one of the one of the things I think most Decred contributors really strongly believe in is privacy. We've designed a proof of work pool which you don't need to create an account. You don't need to provide personal details. You don't need to log in. We certainly don't need your name or your location or anything like that. We've tried to design a pool and the technology allows for this. There is no reason for us to be collecting your email address or your name. Um, we've designed a pool where you don't need to create an account. You can just mine using the address provided by the pool and the pool will pay you rewards for contributing your hash power. So now let's pivot a little bit and talk about governance. Um, how do you feel Decred is creating a new form of human organization with Politea and its governance infrastructure? So the Decred organization, it's a, it's a collection of contributors from all over the world. Um, we've got people on every continent. And we don't have a central meeting point. We don't have a global headquarters. We don't have somewhere where we can actually meet up and talk about things. So what we've done with Politea is we've tried to do that digitally. We've tried to create a system where we can discuss ideas we can bring forward our ideas, talk about the pros and cons of those ideas. And then essentially, the most important part of that is deciding on, as a group, deciding on whether we're actually going to implement those ideas. So the key aspects of Politea that we've created are stakeholder voting, which is directly tied into the blockchain. So you have to have Decred coins and you have to put those coins at stake in order to vote. And the more coins you have, the more tickets you could buy, and the more votes you get. If you aren't part of the Decred ecosystem and you don't have coins, you don't get a say. And what that means is that the decisions are being made by the people who actually hold the coins, the people who have something at stake. Some other coins, their decision making is either a very small group of people who have a little say, or it's, it's like a shouting match on Reddit or, you know, Whoever has the loudest voice gets to make the decision. Um, ours is, we've tried to make something that's a bit more fair. Another really key aspect of this is censorship. We wanted to come up with a platform where people who have controversial ideas don't just get censored. We want to make sure that if somebody is censored, they're censored for the right reasons and that they are able to prove that they've been censored. So what we've done with Politea 
is every time somebody gets censored, if somebody makes an indecent proposal, if somebody makes an inappropriate comment, if they get censored, they actually have a mechanism of proving that they've been censored. They get a, a token which they can share with the public. And if somebody wants to look up this token, they can find out what was said, what was censored, and why it was censored. So if somebody feels like they've been unjustly censored, they're actually able to prove that they've been censored and they might want to make an argument or appeal to this shouldn't have been censored because of this. A lot of systems that doesn't happen. If you get censored, that's it. Your voice doesn't exist anymore and you just have no say. So all the comments on Bulletea are attached to the blockchain? We didn't want to put the actual content of the proposals and the content of the, co uh, the comments into the blockchain because it's an inappropriate use of the blockchain. It would bloat the blockchain unnecessarily. So what we've done instead is we've essentially we've taken a, a hash of the comment or a hash of the proposal and anchored that into the blockchain using our product DCR time. So you might have written a proposal which is, let's say, a thousand words. We're not going to store all of that on the blockchain. What we're going to do instead is take a tiny hash of that and put the hash on the blockchain. And it gives you the same result. Understood. So in what ways do you expect Decred's governance model to be tested as the community grows? I think for me, the biggest risk in that regard is probably going to be voter fatigue. So if we ask our stakeholders to vote on issues maybe, you know, three times a week or 10 times a month, or I think the concern there is that people are going to stop, stop voting. They're going to lose interest in votes. And if we ask people to vote too much, it's, it's going to devalue the meaning of a vote. Um, the other concern I have with Decred voting is that because we're talking about cryptocurrency, we're talking about a very complicated topic. We're talking about cryptography. We're talking about mathematics. And when some of these proposals get really, really technical, you're talking about concepts that you really need a, a huge amount of education to understand. There are consensus rule changes that, you know, they go into a technical spec of a thousand lines and... I don't think your everyday stakeholder is going to understand these issues. So I think there's going to be a, an issue there of if something is so technical that only 5% of people understand it, how do we ask our stakeholders to vote on that? So I guess that's where you would lean on the project leads and their expertise. Yeah, and for me, you know, if we start... You can make the judgment as to who you trust. One of the core principles of cryptocurrency and this whole movement is removing the people that are in powerful positions and not having to trust other people. So this, for me, it kind of feels like we're reintroducing those trusted leaders and those people of power. So I think there might be a... I think there's something we need to solve there. I, th I think it's applicable to the situation that you just outlined, where... It may be too technical for the average person. So there's that trust in your leaders. And I understand what you're saying when it comes to blockchains. That is that is one of the things that we are trying to remove with, with this technology. But what would be the other options? I know it's it's a work in progress. Yeah, and in a way, we, we could consider that this isn't a problem that's been introduced by Decred's governance. It's a problem that already exists in real-world governance. If we look at politics, we can't expect the citizens of a nation to be voting on the details of a financial policy because you need to be an accountant or an yeah, economist the, to understand the those things. Yeah. Exactly. So we, in a way, we have to depend on our politicians to make those decisions for us. And we have to depend on them to explain those reasonings and explain why they're making the decisions where they are. So in a way, I mean, this is a problem that they're sort of carrying from the existing governance of nation states. And we're carrying that into the governance of our blockchain, we need to come up with some way of solving that problem. That, for me, I think is one of the big issues with um, the governance we have so far. So that's covering growing pains. Um, do you see any downfalls in the infrastructure? You know, some argue that it's plutocratic. Um, there has been stabs at, at the current system. Sure. I mean, it's a question I've answered a few times before. People love asking this question. If I've got... A thousand decred and you've only got one i can drown out your voice i can i can you know i can i have more power than you but actually that's exactly the way the system is designed 
if I have a business that I'm running on Decred and my entire business and my livelihood depends on Decred and I have a thousand tickets, I feel like I should have more say over somebody who has one ticket or no tickets. I kind of feel like that that's fair and just. Every single person having one vote and having an equal voice doesn't really work in this system. It just, it doesn't feel right. So now what made you decide to come work for Decred full time? Um, so I think the answer for that begins with my first contributions. When I made my first contributions and I signed my contract and I started getting paid in Decred, um, I started with just a few hours here and there, you know, maybe after work one day or maybe a few hours at the weekend, I'd make some contributions. It got to the point where I realized that there was a lot of stuff I could contribute to this project. I realized that just from lurking on forums and just from talking to people, I started to pick up enough knowledge that I could actually contribute some meaningful stuff to the project. So over about maybe 18 months or two years, I sort of started contributing more and a bit more and a bit more. Um, it got to the point where actually I was invited to come to a conference. So I went to a conference in London in 2017. I met up with Jake. I met up with some other contributors. And for the first time, Decred actually felt real. You know, I actually met real people rather than just talking to people on chat. And that for me was kind of an eye opener. It kind of made me realize that Decred could possibly be my full time job. I could possibly make a living out of just contributing code to this open source project. I ramped up, I started doing a bit more work. My invoices started getting a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. It was a 2018, I went to an event, I met Marco and another couple of uh, Decred contributors. And one of the guys at that event actually had quit his full-time job and he was now making a living working on Decred. And that really fascinated me. I mean, it sounded like a life of luxury. It sounded like he was his own boss. He was managing his own time. He was deciding what he wanted to work on, when he wanted to do it. If he wanted to take a week off, he took a week off. If he wanted to work six days in a row or 12 days in a row, he could do. And that really appealed to me. Um, I've been working in the same full-time job for seven years and I did not enjoy working for somebody else. I did not enjoy working Monday to Friday, nine to five and having no freedom in my life. And working for Decred full time, it almost seemed like it was too good to be true. It seemed like I'd be my own boss. I could make my own schedule. Um, and eventually I just decided to go for it. I spoke with Jake, I spoke with Marco, I spoke to some of the founding members of the project and it, they made it quite clear that I'd be very welcome to work full time on a project. And so, that's what I'm doing now. So now, what advice would you give new developers on how to approach joining the project? Because we know that's something we talk about all the time. So getting involved with the projects, actually, it's a really simple process. I mean, we have all of our work is public. Everything we do is available on GitHub. You can see a list of open issues that we need to work on. You can see what people are currently doing. You can see the whole history of what we've done in the past. Anybody is free to come and look at this. And if you see there are issues on the list, if you see there are features to add, if you see there are bugs to fix and you think you can do that, I would suggest just come along and do it. Come and speak to us. Come and let people know that you want to work on something and then just do the work. If you can contribute something meaningful, if you can contribute something useful and valuable, then we'll probably pay you for that. Now, where are some of the channels where people can come and speak to the developers in the team? So we are, as I mentioned, there's GitHub. That's where we do the most, the majority of our work. All of our sort of work-focused conversation happens on GitHub. If you want to talk about something a bit more informally, then we're available on Slack, we're available on Discord, we're available on Matrix. We have a number of different, um, I think we still even have IRC available. So there's, uh, there's a huge number of ways you can get in contact. And going back to your point, um, I think that's applicable for anyone that wants to join the community. You know, whether it be marketing or however you feel you can contribute. Yeah, so most of our development work happens on GitHub, but Decred is a lot more than just development. We have marketing and PR. We have documentation. We have community management. And there's 
there's a we have people who are doing translations or sort of um, integrations and there's all sorts of different ways people can contribute. It's not just writing code. Yeah, that's the benefits of it being a global project. We have our specialists in different territories around the world. So now, uh, moving forward, Jay, what are some of your concerns for Decred in the future? I think one of the biggest problems that we face, one of the biggest challenges that we face is how do we explain Decred to more people? Because cryptocurrency on the whole is a very complicated subject. It's It touches on math, it touches on cryptography, it touches on economics. There's a lot to understand. And even within the world of cryptocurrencies, Decred is not a simple cryptocurrency. There is a number of different areas you have to understand to really understand Decred as a whole. We've faced criticism that the voting system is too complicated. We've faced criticism that our messaging isn't clear enough. And I think there's a lot we can do to distill our messaging down to make Decred more accessible and to make it easier to explain Decred to the layman. And what are you most optimistic about when it comes to Decred future? I feel like the Decred project is the start of something that could be really huge. I feel like the people who are involved in this project all share quite a vivid vision of transforming the way the world thinks about money. Um, I think we live in a world where most people have an idea of money that hasn't really changed for 50 to 100 years. And I feel like the Decred project could change that view globally. I do feel like in 10 or 20 years, the whole world could be a completely different place because of projects like the Decred project. And, and funny enough, you say that as we were walking down the street in New York and we were having a discussion about exchange and we could not figure out how to wire money to each other fast enough. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, if you can't tell, I'm from the UK and uh, right. yeah, working out how do we get British pounds converted into US dollars without having to pay some middleman a fee. Yeah. Or it, not having certain accounts set up because I did ask for certain accounts and you were just like, I just don't have those. Yeah, habits. I've got this type of account. Have you got one of those? No. no. Um, I don't want to use this because it costs too much. It's weird, right? I mean, it's 2019 and we're two people standing next to each other and we're struggling to work out how to send each other money. Across, I mean, the, across the Atlantic. It's, yeah. I, 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 I don't think we're going to have those problems in five or ten years i think those problems are going to be solved and i think cryptocurrency is going to be a huge part of that so now give me uh, the emotional state of your relation with decred in one word hmm. emotional state um i think if i were to attach one emotion probably excitement as i mentioned i do think that decred is i think it's going to be massive and i think it's going to change i think it's going to have an impact on a lot of people's lives and I'm excited for the future. I'm excited to see what happens. Um, I think I have a good idea of what's going to happen in the next maybe three, six or 12 months, but I don't know where we're going to be in five years or 10 years. And I'm excited to see that unfold. Yeah. I'm with you. So now let's get into the Decred Bulletproof section. Um, I've taken some statements uh, from Twitter and different places online. And I'm going to ask you these questions and I'll play devil's advocate. You let me know. So we'll start with the first one. If Decred was to fail, what would be the cause of its death? Fail. Death. Um, that's an interesting question because if we're going to talk about the death of Decred, I mean, what does it mean for Decred to be alive? Um, I guess a cryptocurrency is alive as long as it has value. And what gives it value? Um I guess something only has value if it's exchanged between two people, right? So I guess that... The social layer provides a value. Yeah. As long as two people are trading and exchanging something, then it has value, so it's alive. The only way that can happen is if somebody is mining and somebody is producing blocks. If nobody's producing blocks, then we can't have transactions and then there's no value because there's no exchange. Another aspect of that is the the code and the development. If nobody's writing code, is the project still alive? I mean, you can look at an example, actually. If you look at something like Dogecoin, 
I don't think they've had a code change or any active development for four or five years, but the token is still exchanging. It's still um, still got value. So, what does it mean for a project to be alive? If it's got, if it's being transacted, if it's being mined, I think they're the key things. So, as long as Decred has people using it, it's alive. Understood. So let's get into the second one. Um, some say it's good for it to be difficult to change consensus. Decred does nothing but bake a specific activation method into the protocol layer, which can be ported into any other project. I think that question answers itself. Decred does nothing special apart from one very special thing. And that is the thing that makes Decred special. Um, it's very easy to say, oh, it's just an activation method for, for consensus changes, but it's, it's very, very complex. It's not a simple thing. I'm not sure if it is something that could just be ported to any other project. Um, you may be able to port the code, but you can't port the people or the leadership. I'm not even sure if you could port the code. I think if you took an example like Bitcoin, and if you tried to add Decred's governance model to Bitcoin, A, it would be a massive technical challenge, but it'd also be a massive social challenge. I'm not and sure would, if the you community... Would to, you would have to create a new project. I'm not sure if the community would accept a change on that level. Um, so yeah, I think I disagree with the premise of that statement. I don't think that you could port this to any project. So now we'll get into the third Bitcoin launch without a pre-mine. All the all other projects outside of Bitcoin are built around the financial interest of their creators. Okay, there's two parts to that. Bitcoin launched without a pre-mine. Bitcoin had the unique advantage of being first. So the people who created Bitcoin had a very, very long window of opportunity where they were the only people mining. That gave them the opportunity to stock up some funds and to fund the, the future of Bitcoin. And that isn't really true these days. If you try and launch a cryptocurrency today, you're going to have people pointing GPUs and ASICs farms at it pretty much on day one. So Bitcoin it didn't have a pre-mine. It's pretty good without one. But I think a lot of that is down to its first to market advantage. The second part of that, projects are only focused on their inventors. Financial uh, interests. I mean, I think Decred is a perfect example of why that's not true. If the founders of the Decred project wanted to run away with their profits, then they could have done that a long time ago. But they haven't because, at least I believe, that they are genuinely invested in creating a better future, in creating a financial system that works for everybody. I don't think they're here to turn a quick profit and run away. And maybe that is true of some currencies, maybe it's not for others. I, don't. I think it's a very cynical statement and I think it paints a lot of people with the same brush and I don't think it's true. So now the fourth, uh, people will invest in things that make the world better, whether it be time or money, they will invest. You don't need a dev fund embedded into your protocol to incentivize development. Hmm. Again, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so... Let's take the first bit. People will invest in things that make a world a better place. Are we going to assume that's true? Um, if we look at the world, I think we can see there is, you know, billionaires, there are millionaires, and there are people out there who could single-handedly fix real-world problems. You know, there are people out there who could probably, with their fortune, single-handedly reduce the amount of uh, fossil fuels we're burning or they could, you know, they could make real steps towards saving the planet, but just because they can, it doesn't mean they do. There are people out there with billions and billions and billions of pounds, but how much of that gets given to charity? I don't know, but it's not. Just because people have money, they, it doesn't mean they're going to spend it on saving the world. There's another part to that. You don't need a dev fund in your protocol to incentivize development. The dev fund, if you don't have a dev fund, I think your options are essentially you are, you're hoping for some kind of outside sort of private investment or donation. And private investment and donations, they often come with strings attached. There's often, I mean, look at the political world. 
if you look at the political world, it's called lobbying, right? But what we all know in reality is bribery. You give somebody a huge amount of money and you get what you want. And a dev fund doesn't come with those kind of strings attached. A dev fund is... It's available for anybody. I mean, if you come along and you make a sound proposal and the stakeholders agree that you deserve that funds, those funds, then you get them. And there's no kind of political strings attached. And also the dev fund as well is more consistent. I mean, if you are depending on just on donations and you're just depending on private contributions, then typically somebody is going to give you a huge lump of money and you need to make that last. Or, you know, a donation might come out of the blue when you don't expect it. With a, a development fund, which is topped up every time a block reward is generated, that is completely predictable. We can predict the growth of that fund 100 years into the future. And that gives us a lot more flexibility with our planning and what we're going to do in the future. It gives us a lot more predictability. So now, uh, give me your closing thoughts and message to newcomers and potential stakeholders. I think I would say to anybody, if you're interested in cryptocurrency, if you're interested in Bitcoin, if you're interested in Ethereum, if you find the whole world of cryptocurrency interesting, you have to do yourself a favor and you have to look into Decred. Decred is really pushing the boundaries of what cryptocurrency technology is, what a decentralized organization is, and some of the guys working on the project, I mean... Just some of the guys, some of the conversations I have with the guys in Decred projects, I feel like I'm learning just by talking to them. Even in, uh, even just talking about like informal topics, like not related to cryptocurrency. Some of these guys are so smart and so intelligent that you, you learn just by being in the same room. We're talking about Jake and his aliens. Not even. I mean, we. we I, I, I think that applies to <laughs> all of uh, the crypto, all of the informal guys, all the company zero guys, but also just. Just half the guys in chat, you know, just half the contributors, people I've never met, people, even anonymous people, I don't know their names, I don't know what country they're in, but it just seems, there's something about Decred that seems to attract a certain type of person. I agree, most definitely. Jamie, where can people find you? So the best place to get in contact with me is probably to visit the Decred community on Slack or on Discord or on Matrix. I have Twitter, but I've tweeted once and I very rarely look at Twitter. So yeah, come and hit me on uh, one of our chat platforms. Appreciate you coming by, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to meet you.